How you guys doing? It's a hot day of today, but uh, I got the machine back together. It took me two days, and uh, yeah, so we got the little bit of rail sticking out on the front, and uh, we got coolant. Got some dead spiders in there, I found out. And uh, yeah, so I just uh, have a bit of it sticking out the back, and uh, yeah, I ended up uh, not uh, uh, scraping this in. Uh, yeah, I just I'll leave it for another day. I have enough things because I like longer rails and then new ball screw and new ball screw up there, both uh, DFU, so double nuts. And uh, yeah, I just want to get it back together. And uh, you'll notice I have a uh, wood tram plate on there. Uh, that's because on the uh, this is the aluminum one, and you can see the shiny part here I just milled. So I needed to add that pocket in for the DFU nut to fit in there. So it is in there now. And the uh, these holes here, so these are new holes as well. And those are the old holes because the nut is a different size, it's a little bigger. So what I did was an, instead of trying to like reuse the holes and stuff, which wasn't gonna work, I just shifted everything down a little bit and I was totally fine with the, the assembly and SolidWorks. So yeah, that's all done. So now I gotta just Stick this back on the machine, and uh, yeah, that's what it looks like on that side. All right, so I just finished uh, milling out this uh, pocket here. So that's for the uh, DFU because it's bigger, just the geometry of it. It's bigger and everything, so now it'll fit there. Uh, I gotta put in some uh, some new holes because not uh, block housing is bigger dimensionally, so the whole pattern is different. So I was going really easy with this because I'm running a plywood tram plate. So I was doing about around two millimeter step over adaptive, two millimeter step down. So it went uh, three passes. And even with that, like that's, uh, that's pretty light cut. But yeah, it was struggling. This plywood is maybe a centimeter or so. I could tell like along, along here, like it was kind of wobbling and warping and stuff. You could hear it during the cuts when it was uh, like when I was cutting along here, uh, and this direction is fine, but when cutting in this direction, you could hear it going whoa, 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 and then it would be fine, it's, whoa, and then whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, but it's uh, made it. Hopefully, uh, this depth is uh, correct. I know I had to adjust the depth when I was making it for this one uh, a little bit, so um, I have it butted up against the uh, the edge here that I milled with the tram plate this new setup so the alignment I can just put it back in the corner and get the alignment and like this this really is just I just need the depth I don't need any of the fancy edges to be exact and stuff so I can always just stick it back there if I need to take a little bit off like another tenth of a millimeter or so it should be easy to do here's the new holes so we have uh, those ones here are the new ones and then those are the old ones oh. looks good Oh, we're stuck. There we go. Oh! It's not working. Something I noticed after that adaptive is the uh, spindle is quite warm. So that must mean that the pump is either not running, uh, which I think it is, because normally I have a bubble on the top here. Or it's probably clogged, so I think it's probably clogged. I got some chips in there, so I have to clean that up. Oh, and uh, look at that, eh? Got some uh, spiders. That's a big one, eh? Maybe one of those guys got uh, sucked into the uh, pump here and clogged up. So I'm going through the process of putting this uh, tram plate back on. And this is the one where I put the pocket in here. And putting the bolts down, I noticed that putting them down, uh, I'm binding on the ball screw. So that means that the pocket that is right here is not deep enough. And uh, what I've done now is I've loosened the uh, bolts so they're not tight or anything. And I moved everything up to the very top. And I put some shims in there to uh, try and determine the gap I need. So you can see here's the gap and you'll notice that the where the thread goes into the bolt 
it is the it is a little bit thinner there. So I put some on uh, some shims on this side to fill in the gap, and I've done the same on this side. This side, the uh, the space is smaller, so less shims. And what my plan is to do is to pull the shims out and measure them, and then take the average uh, thickness of all those shims, and then that'll be my new value to machine down this. And uh, I'm trying to wedge them in there good, so like. What might happen is I might go too far, which is fine with me, because I can always put a single shim uh, just to get the alignment correct. But that way I won't have to uh, go back and machine it a little bit deeper. So on the left side, you're getting half a millimeter. Here's the right side, so about three quarters of a millimeter. Average is 0.61. Camera got bumped. Okay, third time it'll work. Alright, this is the shot. So that was taking 0.65 millimeters off the top. So yeah, you can see uh, there's a lot of chatter in the wood tram plate. Here's the setup I had. So this thing's all flexing away. This thing picked up the uh, vibration of the tram plate as it's uh, bending this way because it's like it's just supported by the wood right there. So yeah, when it was going in this direction, it would be vibrating around. Another thing I did in the G-code when I updated it was to drop the step over down to 1.5. So that kind of helped with the chatter. So with the new pockets, uh, everything is on there and everything is good. It all moves freely. So I didn't have to add any shims. So I didn't have to shim this piece at all, which is great. Uh, I thought I might have had to just because I was just pushing in the uh, aluminum shims when it was like this before. I thought maybe I would push everything out a little bit, but that was not the case. And uh, yeah, so this is the uh, old one here. So one time use, but I'll have to keep this around just in case in the future I wanna modify this one again. I need to put this one on. Um, yeah, so the pocket's in there, everything's good. The DFU uh, ball screw is in, and uh, yeah, everything's tight and uh, good down here. This is nice and tight, it's not moving anywhere. That's it for upgrades for now. In the next video, I will be doing stuff with some magnets and some ball bearings and the laser level and the webcam. Except uh, these will be configured in a different way. I'm gonna attempt to make a ball bar. So that'll be quite interesting. I'm gonna work on the uh, hardware first. Once I get that working, I will be building up the software to do it all. Software will be on GitHub and any kind of hardware at least in the first prototype, I'm going to use 3D printing. So I'm going to be doing that. And then the files for all that, I'll, I'll put online, probably at printables or something. Look out for that one. And uh, I will see you guys next time.